Hi, kindergarten. It's Miss Cliff. Today we're going to read a level E book called Zatz Learns to Play. In today's book, we're going to be talking about making connections to prior knowledge. We're also going to be discussing the problem and solution, and we'll also be identifying quotation marks. Some materials you're going to need for today is your problem and solution chart, a pencil, and your quotations worksheet. So if you need to, you can pause the video and go get those materials now. Today we're going to read all about a character named Zatz and his friends as he learns how to play. Today we're going to learn about making connections. Now, good readers make connections between what they already know and information they read. And this is called connecting to prior knowledge, things that you already know. Thinking about what you already know helps you understand and enjoy what you read. In stories we read, we know that there's often a problem that needs to be solved. If there's a problem, then there's also a solution. And that's what happens to fix the problem. So we will be identifying that as we read today. Our focus question for today is how do the characters solve their problem? So as we read through, we are going to answer this question. Let's look at some of our words to know that are in our story today. I'll say the word first and I want you to repeat after me against, breaking, create, rules, swings, touches. So as we read today, we will see some of these words to know. Let's go ahead and look at the picture. And then we're going to read the words. I will read the words first, and then I want you to read it back to me. Now, I know that good readers track the words with their eyes. So that's what I want you to do today. Here we go. Abby and Zatz are best friends. Your turn. Zatz is from outer space. Your turn. Now, can you identify the character that is Zatz? Where is Zatz from? Can you find it in the text and put your finger on it? There it is. Zatz is from outer space. So as we read, we can answer some questions and put our finger on it because the words give us the answer. Here's the character Zatz and here's his friend, Abby. Let's keep reading. Come and play with us, Abby says. Your turn to read. Now, you may have noticed that I've highlighted the quotation marks. Do you know what quotation marks mean? Quotation marks means that a character is talking. That's right. A character is talking. So we see quotation marks at the beginning of where the character talks and then again where the character finishes talking. So here it says, come and play with us. And which character said that? Abby, because it says, Abby says. So oftentimes we see those quotations at the beginning and the end. And usually we see this little comma here. And the comma signifies that the character is done talking. And usually it says, 
which character is saying it. So here it says, Abby says. So as we keep reading, I want you to look for those quotation marks that signify that a character is talking. Let's keep reading. They play tag. Your turn. Zots touches everyone. Your turn. Look at Zots. What is he doing? He grew some arms, didn't he? It looks like he's playing tag and touching everybody. Let's find out what happens next. That's against the rules, the kids say. Your turn to read. Go. Only touch one person, Abby explains. Your turn to read. Did you find some more quotation marks? I found some here and here. That's against the rules. Who said that? The kids said that, right? We can find that in the text. And what about here? Only touch one person. Who said that? Abby explained it to Zots, didn't she? So here it says, Abby explains. Now, how do you think the characters are feeling? How do you know that they're feeling that way? I'm thinking that the characters are feeling kind of sad. I know this because I'm looking at their facial expressions. So what is their face telling me? Well, let's look at Abby's face. She's not smiling, is she? Mm -mm. Neither is Zatz. Look at Zatz's eyebrows. Does he look a little confused? Like, hmm? What do you mean? And then I'm looking at the kids' facial expressions as well. And they have kind of a sad frown on their face. Why do you think that is? Why do you think they're sad? Hmm. You think Zatz is breaking the rules? Have you ever played a game with someone that broke the rules? How did you feel when they broke the rules? I would feel sad too if someone broke the rules while I was playing a game with them. So if you have an example of a time that that happened to you, you're tapping into your prior knowledge. You're using what you already know to help you understand what's happening in the story. Let's keep reading and see if we can find out what the problem and solution is. They play baseball. Your turn to read. Zots swings the bats. Your turn. Oh my goodness, did he grow some arms again? It looks like he grew some arms again, just like when he was playing tag. That's against the rules, the kids say. Your turn to read. Only swing one bat, Abby explains. Your turn to read. How are the kids feeling now? Well, it doesn't look like they're frowning like they were before. 
Are they starting to understand that Zatz doesn't know what the rules are? I think so. They're maybe being a little bit patient with Zatz, and Abby is explaining the rules to Zatz. So let's stop here, and we're going to go to our problem and solution chart. Now that we're on our problem and solution chart, we are going to think about what the problem is in the story. I want you to pause the video and turn and talk with a parent or sibling and discuss what the problem is in the story. Then you're going to write a complete sentence at the top where it says problem. You're going to write the problem in the story is and then finish up the sentence with what the problem is. So pause the video and go ahead and do that now. Well, I know that Zatz is having some problems because he's not understanding what the rules are and he keeps breaking them, right? So I'm going to write that the problem is the, in the story is Zatz does not understand the rules and keeps breaking them. All right, now before we move on, I want you to think about what some possible solutions are. We're going to keep reading and you can gather some ideas that you might have, but before we find out what the solution is, you are going to make two predictions or have two ideas of how Zatz and Abby and the kids can solve their problems. So start thinking about that. You can tap into your prior knowledge that um, how, how would you solve this problem if this was you? Or have you solved a problem like this before? So start thinking about that now. They play cards. Your turn to read. Zatz sees the cards. Your turn. Did Zatz grow some eyeballs? Oh my goodness. That's against the rules, the kids say. Your turn to read. Only look at your cards, Abby explains. Your turn to read. Do you see some more quotation marks? Yes, I see them here for when the kids are talking, and I see them here for when Abby is explaining to Zatz that he's not supposed to be looking at other kids' cards. So now that we've read a little bit more, I want you to stop and think about if you have predictions or ideas about how the kids and Abby and Zatz can solve their problem. Let's go back to our problem and solution chart. I want you to think about what you've read and think about what you already know. What are some ideas you have for how the kids and Zots can solve their problem? You are going to think about some possible solutions and put one idea here and the other idea here. What are some ways that Zots and the kids could solve their problem. Pause the video and go ahead and do that now. Some ideas that I have for possible solutions, they might be different than yours and that's okay. One idea I have is um, they could tell Zatz what the rules are before they start playing. So, one idea is telling Zatz the rules before they start, oops, start playing. So, there's one idea. There we go. 
Now, another idea is that they could make up a new game and have Zots help them make up the rules. So I'm going to put that for my other idea. Another idea is make up a new game and have Zots help with the rules. Okay. So there are my two possible solutions. Now, remember, those are just predictions. They don't have to be right. What is important is that I'm thinking about how I could solve the problem. I'm making some predictions and tapping into that prior knowledge to come up with some ideas. So if that's not what the solution is, that's okay. Let's head back to our book. You have a lot of rules, Zot says. Your turn to read. You have great ways of breaking them, the kids say. Your turn to read. Did you see some more quotation marks? Who are some of the characters talking on this page? Right, Zatz was talking and the kids were talking. We can see up here the quotation marks. You have a lot of rules, Zatz says. See how there's that little comma? With the quotation mark at the end, that signifies that the person is done talking and then it says, Zatz says. It tells us who is talking. So who, um, how are the characters feeling now and how do you know? How do you think Zatz is feeling? Yeah, if I'm looking at his facial expression, remember, we can look at people's face to know how they're feeling. He's looking pretty sad. Look, his eyebrows are down. He's looking down, has kind of a frown on his face. He's feeling kind of bad because he doesn't know the rules and he keeps breaking them, right? What about the kids? How are the kids feeling? Yeah, they're looking like they're kind of happy. You think they're joking around maybe? You have a great way of breaking the rules, right? That's kind of a joke. I also think that they're trying to encourage Zots. They're not sad and angry like they were at the beginning of the book because they are starting to understand that Zots doesn't know the rules, right? They keep having to tell him what the rules are. So they're being very patient and they're being very understanding, aren't they? I really like here how Abby has her arm around Zots. Like, it's okay, Zots. We're going to help you. Let's create new rules for Zots, Abby says. Your turn to read. So they're going to create new rules for Zots. What does that mean? They're going to make up new rules, aren't they? They're going to change the rules and make new rules just for Zots. So how did they solve their problem? Right, they made new rules for Zots. So let's go back to our problem and solution chart. Let's think about how the problem was solved. The actual solution. So I want you to pause the video, turn and talk with a parent or sibling about how the problem was solved. And then I want you to write a complete sentence for how the actual solution came to be. Go ahead and do that now.
So I'm going to write the problem was solved when the kids came up with new rules just for Zach. Great job thinking through the solution. So now that we have solved our problem and solution, we are going to move on to our writing portion of the lesson. For today's writing portion of our lesson, you are going to write the rules for a game you know. So it could be any game that you want to write the rules for. And then you're going to share the rules with a parent or a sibling. I want you to write at least three sentences for how to play the game and explain the rules. Then you're going to talk with a parent or sibling about why it is important to follow the rules when playing a game. So you're going to tap into that prior knowledge again. Think about what you know about why it's important to follow the rules when you're playing a game with someone else. When you're finished with your writing activity, then you're going to do this quotation activity. So you are going to read through the sentences and figure out where the quotation marks go. So remember, we talked about the quotation marks in the book are before the character begins talking and then after the character finishes talking. We know that it usually says who the character is that is talking. So make sure you read through the sentences and figure out where those quotation marks belong. You are going to submit your writing, your problem solution chart, and your quotations chart into Google Classroom. So that's three activities for today's lesson. I also have some bonus craft activities for you. So here I have some bonus crafts for you. You can print and cut out these planets and then you could arrange them in order. You could hang them from a hanger in order. You could do some really fun things uh, with the planet craft. I also have some other ideas for you. If you wanted to think outside the box, you could make your own rocket ship. You could even use um, shaving cream with paint and make kind of a marbly cool texture and print it on a paper plate. You could make your own outer space alien craft. You could build a rocket ship from a toilet paper tube or do some paint and marble rolling to make the planet. So I hope you have fun with this craft activity. If you do any of the craft activities, please take a picture and send it to your teacher. We would love to see. Have fun with your reading. Don't forget to go back and reread because that's what good readers do. And I will see you next time. Bye, friends.